Would you like to start? <laughs> I don't know how to fucking start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> start and end. Fuck it. I liked the uh, the Usher when the movie got out. Um, <laughs> he wasn't even at the movie, but I guess yeah. he had seen it. Um, and he said, uh, he's just standing there in the hallway with his broom. We're like waiting for us to get out. Yeah. A fart joke. Can you believe it? It ended on a fart joke. And our reaction was, well, it began with a fart joke. Like, yeah. it, it came full circle. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Honestly, I think it should have ended just on that shot of Mary Elizabeth Winstead going, going what the fuck? The end. <laughs> that honestly would have been perfect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> fucking hell. What to say about this fucking movie? I'm, I'm a little lost for words, honestly. I can say, um, well, what, what you said on the way out, which was, I wasn't bored. No, um, wasn't bored at all. Like, yeah. I can't say I disliked it either. Mm -hmm. Like, I enjoyed the experience of watching that movie. It's too much of a weird experience for me to be like, I regret seeing this. Because there was no point I was bored. Yeah. I was always interested in... Where are you taking me here, movie? Yeah. Like, I was... It's it's unpredictable. Um, it's absolutely unpredictable. It's the... You know what it is? It's the kind of movie that I'm cool with having seen once, but Alex Shryock would watch a million times. I want to <laughs> watch it again. <laughs> um, to understand it. Mm -hmm. It's because... I'm a fairly intelligent man, and I think I got some of the message in this, but then it would take a turn, and it's mm -hmm. like, okay, what's the message now? And then it would take another turn. Yeah. And it's, it's so it's, it's kind of, like, I want to watch it again to break it down, like, on an intellectual level. Not necessarily that I need to watch it again to watch it again, uh -huh. but I feel the need to understand this fucking movie. <laughs> I don't right know if now, I care I that much. Don't. Um, I'm, I'm it, just, I'm intrigued. At first, I was more like, uh, I mean, this is the kind of movie where I don't need to see it again, but I'm cool with browsing message boards to see what other people think about it. Yeah. Um, at least in, in terms of uh, how they interpret a lot of this shit in this movie. Because if you've seen the trailer, then what you see in the trailer is Paul Dano is stuck on an island and he finds a corpse and it's Daniel Radcliffe and he begins kind of using Daniel Radcliffe as like a raft or like a thing that shoots rocks out of his mouth and he can chop wood with him. That's part of the movie. <laughs> and so, you know, what it looks like there is, oh, it's like this nice friendship movie with a dude going crazy on an island with a talking yeah. corpse. You know, right? Okay, right on. I like Paul Dano. I like Daniel Radcliffe. I could see them carry a movie for 90 minutes. Um, so what sort of started out to me is like a movie about this guy's version of seeing his life flash before his eyes, before he dies. Um, because everything he's talking about Daniel Rad with, with Daniel Radcliffe has to do with his past from things in his childhood to growing up to his relationship with his father to discovering what sex is and then being in love with this girl so for a while I was watching it like okay it's kind of an inventive way of showing a story about a guy who maybe has possibly died earlier in the movie and this is just kind of his experiences in his own way sort of flashing before him but then when it gets to the last act of the movie I can also be cool with thinking like, oh, it's just about a creepy stalker who's insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh, why is he insane? And I mean, some of the conversations they're having, it, it does lead you to the, the idea that he's, uh, you know, coming to terms with life because he's breaking things down. So, yeah. so like, like you would explain things to a fucking child, mm -hmm. like big concepts and breaking down and explaining it like you would to a child. Mm hmm. But then they had that last act, it took a weird turn where it's mm -hmm. like, I think I lost the plot, man. <laughs> I think I lost <laughs> the I plot. But I didn't expect it to end here. Yeah. I didn't expect it to end up here. I didn't expect, uh, you know, a fight with a burning corpse and a bear 
and then poor Mary Elizabeth Winstead, who's stuck in her world is like now turned into a psychological thriller yeah. in terms of her character with this creepy stalker man in her backyard with a dead body. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Just, it was a little out there. But at the same time, I can't say I disliked it. It was No, funny. I can't say I recommend it to everybody. Lord, no. No. Hmm. No, you gotta be really open to some weird shit to... Yeah, I I know the kinds of people who would uh, dig this movie in the same way as me, where I'm like, that was entertaining, it was unpredictable, it was creative. Um, It was uh, beautifully fucking made. Yeah. um, The two actors have good chemistry together. Honestly, if if this... They were great. Both of them mm -hmm. were... If this movie was not so fucking bizarre performance wise I would say probably nomination worthy I don't but see not that for happening. this fucking movie <laughs> it's not gonna happen uh-huh. no it's not going to happen yeah but yeah, they were no, great it's, performances it's I love Daniel Radcliffe's bat shit insane career yeah um, yeah we were talking about that before we got in the car too yeah. it's just like alright make eight Harry Potter movies and then Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Farting corpse or neo-Nazi. Whatever. Um, Yeah, Crazy Igor and uh, Victor Frankenstein. Yeah, like weird shit. Like you, I, I do like that when that happens, because that happens a lot when you get an actor who, you know, was in a bunch of franchise movies yeah. like the Harry Potter series or something like that, and then once that's over, just like fucking cut loose man yeah like all the weird stuff you see like robert pattinson or Kristen stewart in yeah. or like uh honestly hell even shia labeouf outside of the going outside of the transformers movies once he wasn't in those anymore the random hell we got a trailer for a weird ass movie with him in it in front of the it's, yeah um and, you know shia labeouf there's something about that dude i just don't fucking like him mm. I understand he's not a bad actor, mm-hmm. and I understand I've enjoyed several movies he's been in. Yeah, I have I too. Just see him, and then something in my brain just kind of goes, "Ah, fuck." Mm-hmm. <laughs> that movie didn't. That movie looked okay. What was that? American Honey or something yeah. like that. At first, when that trailer first started, I was like, "Is this like another fucking Harmony Corinne movie?" But then, when one of the critical quotes called it optimistic, I figured that probably wasn't the case. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but uh, optimistic for this generation, and it's like, what generation? Mm. <laughs> like, I don't know. Hell, yeah. like we grew up in the '90s, so like optimistic then probably was the movie Kids. Yeah. <laughs> Kids was not fucking optimistic. <laughs> Look, no. downside is you got AIDS. Upside, well, he didn't die at the end. <laughs> it's, a happy, it's the happiest yeah. movie of the year. <laughs> fucking hell. A lighthearted comedy in the 90s was pie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's there not to like? You put a drill in his head at the end, and uh, yeah, he's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus fuck, man. <laughs> oh. Fucking pessimistic ass decade. <laughs> it really was. You know what? It wasn't that it was a pestim- pessimistic ass decade. It's just that all the good movies were really pessimistic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank God we had the Farrelly brothers to mix it up a little bit. Oh, no. Sh- yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, and I, I, I think that's why Adam Sandler became really popular, too, oh God. is because it's like, well, we could go see Requiem for a Dream, or we could go see Big Daddy. I'd rather see Requiem for a Dream. I'm more depressed at Big Daddy. No, no, I don't disagree. <laughs> but most people wouldn't make that call. No, no, most people wouldn't make that call. Just me and Mar, just me and you watching movies in your folks' basement. Hey, what do we do? We play Nintendo 64, or we watch uh, this drug movie with Jared Leto in it. Both. We can do both. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> we've got soda. We've got cookie dough. We're staying up late. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking years of not sleeping.
and I can picture us having seen this movie like back when we were in high school yeah um i probably would have had the same opinion of it honestly uh, to tell you the truth that it would probably depend on who i saw it with yeah um because i can picture like i was saying earlier like i i can picture in my head who would really 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 love this movie alex shryock being one brian being the other um I can also picture in my head exactly who would hate this movie. My dad. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, fuck. Bob, Bob, this is one of those movies Bob would walk through the room, look at both of us, and go, uh, and just uh -huh. keep walking. Yeah. He'd be like, too weird. Too weird. <laughs> my dad doesn't like too weird. I, I don't... My mom, though, I don't know. This might be a crapshoot. I think this is a crapshoot for a lot of people. It's, mm -hmm. yeah, it's kinda. the thing is, it's, it's, it's so. I think it's honestly, almost. It's so open to interpretation that it just kind of depends on the person viewing it and what mood they're in and what they're looking for. I guess if you love hipster comedies. You will love this movie. Absolutely, hands down, you will love this movie. Yeah, probably. And mm -mm. I can't say that I love hipster comedies, but... Hit or miss. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah, because there is a point where it's so pretentious, you just want to go, fuck you, half the time. That, that was something about this movie. is Obviously, there was something going on, but... It certainly wasn't pretentious. This is the kind of movie where, like, one wrong step in the performances or the line delivery, and yeah. I would have been like, fuck you, movie. Yeah. Like, one wrong step. Because, really, you could tell me that either, either this movie has a point to it from beginning to end, or that the guys were just making up shit as it went along, and I would believe either one of those yeah. cases. Yeah, um, no, absolutely. But, given how fun it is to watch Paul Dano be crazy with gross shit happening with Daniel Radcliffe something about that did carry this movie <laughs> yeah. no and it's honestly those two the, it, it it's the performances that really carried it, it if it's the a performance movie it's... if the performances weren't anywhere near mm -hmm. as good as they were and they were honestly really good performances yeah like it's a two-man show yeah. the whole movie is uh except for you know a few people who pop up at the end but but they're 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 not there really to be people they're there to be yeah a, to reflect on the two main characters that's all they are <laughs> this kind of as i was watching it this reminded me of like you could also tell me that this was like a string of weird Saturday Night Live sketches, yeah, strung together. The, like... the first two acts, <laughs> yeah. the first two acts, like every thirty seconds, you could go put in a cut, put it on the internet. That thing's gonna be a fucking smash. Yeah, it's a weird series. Whether it's like one of those Saturday Night Live sketches that kind of has an sort yeah. of overarching story to it or some weird online series in like 10 minute increments that's about some crazy guy and his corpse friend lost in the woods yeah sure yeah, yeah. now from the from the opening of the movie to the end of the opening credit sequence mm -hmm. like <laughs> like three minutes uh-huh that could have been a funnier die skit yeah a really weird dark funnier die skit yeah uh, hell, the first three minutes of this movie, you're you're gonna know whether or not you're, in you're gonna or not. you're yeah. gonna give this movie a chance because the first three minutes is him riding Daniel Radcliffe's farting corpse like a jet ski right across after, the water, as opposed to killing himself. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh yeah, and there is something funny about seeing bearded, scruffy ass Paul Dano trying to hang himself but he can't concentrate because of a farting corpse in the background <laughs> there's something funny about it that. made me it, it honestly like i know it was sophomoric but it made me laugh mm-hmm yeah it seems like a dare like someone <laughs> dared these two guys like they were smoking pot in fucking college or something like 
Dude, man, I'll bet you you couldn't make a fucking movie about, like, a fucking farting corpse and, like, dude, from there will be blood stuck in the woods. (laughs) Oh, yeah, man. Challenge accepted. (laughs) Oh, yeah? Throw in Harry Potter. (laughs) Done! (laughs) Way ahead of you. (laughs) Let's get the Scott Pilgrim audience in there. Fucking throw in Ramona Flowers. (laughs) <laughs> fucking Mary Elizabeth Winstead god damn it I like her as an actress I do too I, I wish she did more movies that I gave a fuck about I loved uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane I didn't um, get a can- chance to catch that yet like I like I know you didn't care for it but I like Scott Pilgrim I might have been in a bad mood when I saw that it, it, <clears throat> it happens it's also that movie, in my opinion, it, it, it's fun, but I also am the audience for it. Mm. Like uh, I was, had been reading mm-hmm. those, those comics for a while, so it was, for me, it was one of those. Okay, I'm curious about this because they made the movie before they finished the series of comic mm-hmm. books, so it's yeah. like, all right. No, I, I imagine I was probably just not in the mood for that because I, I don't know, like maybe me and Jillian got in a fight that day or something. <laughs> I don't want to see this quirky love shit. Well, uh, and, and don't, you know, I like that movie. Don't get me wrong. I have issues with it. Like, I don't think it's perfect. Like, uh, mm. Michael Sarah to me, is still not good casting for Scott Pilgrim. But, but I'm less annoyed by Michael Sarah now than I was five years ago when well, that movie came out. Well, y- yeah. Yeah. It's, uh... <clears throat> my, He's one of those dudes that I, I'm, I'm curious to see where his career is going to go over the next couple of years. Because, I, I, shit, I don't think I've seen him in much of anything lately. The last thing I think I saw him in was maybe This Is The End? Yeah. Didn't the, maybe. But the the Arrested Development oh, that, season was after that, wasn't it? Was it? It was I can't remember. around then, probably. Uh, yeah, I can't remember. <clears throat> I want to see him have, like, a dark phase of movies or something like put him in a movie where he's like a fucking neo-nazi like in radcliffe's next movie he'd, he'd be a good creepy killer would it yeah he would he'd be terrifying <laughs> exactly um what did we okay we got that that trailer for uh the one we mentioned earlier the american honey what, what was that one like free fire that looked great the one with oh, charles yeah, copley like, and yeah, yeah. Shalto Copley, Brie Larson, yeah, fucking uh, Army Hammer. Who? Y- yes. I fucking, I see Army Hammer in a movie. I'm mm-hmm. gonna watch it. I like yeah. that dude a lot. Army Hammer's in this. All right, totally. And executive it's... person. It looks like the entire movie is one long like gunfight with comedy in it. Yeah. Uh, I'm down. It looked hilarious. Uh. It also doesn't hurt either of our sensibilities. That it also looked like it took place during the seventies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it looks like it looks like one of those movies that takes place in the seventies, but made in the nineties. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, what was that one we got? It was with uh, Anna Gunn, uh, Skylar White. Equity? Oh, equity, yeah. Well, who gives a flying fuck? I don't know. I was kind of like... I like I like Anna Gunn. I do, too. Like, I'm, and I leaned over to you, and I was like, if she's just straight up playing Skylar White in this, fuck yeah. <laughs> she was one of my favorite characters on that show. Everyone hated that character on I that didn't. show. Except, I think except for us. Because, because that's exactly who that character would be. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Like, if it weren't everyone for that, thinks she's such a bitch. It's like her husband's a killing drug lord. Yeah, who's he's kind of an not idiot. a good guy. Just because you like him mm-hmm. does not make him a good guy. Yeah, no, she kept his ass from jail on several goddamn fucking occasions. She's allowed to be a little bitchy. Yeah, now like the I be- liked her in Deadwood too, but you know, mm-hmm. I now like the. Like, the Betty Draper hate from Mad Men. I got that. Oh, yeah. Her fucking mommy dearest ass. Well, Skylar was... White, though? No, no, not at all. <laughs> no, Skylar White was a good woman in a hard situation. Betty Draper was a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> they kind of make you not hate Betty Draper at the end of that series, though, when they give her cancer. Because that's what it took. <laughs> 
Wow. Like, well, I can't hate someone who's going to die at the age of 40 like cancer. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, you can. I really couldn't. She wasn't that mean in the final season. <laughs> but, uh... No, Equity looked like the kind of movie, like, if it was made in the mid-90s, it'd be sh starring Sharon Stone and have a lot of nudity in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's... A, I can definitely see that. It was kind of a well-put-together and edited trailer for a movie that, if you were to see it, might be kind of boring. It looks... It, to me, it looked really fucking boring. <laughs> really boring. Uh -huh. Like, it's the kind of movie that... I can think of like two directors off the top of my head that can make me get, three directors that can make me interested enough to see it based on how they direct a movie. Uh, Martin Scorsese, David Fincher. Nah, not that. Not Fincher. That's not a Fincher esque. Michael Mann. Yeah. Or Oliver Stone. I Oliver Stone was my next yeah. choice. Yeah. Those three guys. Mm -hmm. Like David Fincher on that, I'd be like, ah, Fincher. That's. But it's I could, too the way they Fincher. were lighting that trailer, though, yeah. it, and even some of the music cues they were using in that trailer was, I mean, not that I was sitting there thinking it was a David Fincher movie, but, no, but I was like, yeah, they're kind of lighting it as such. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're going for, yeah, who knows, and then what else did we got? Fucking Lights Out again. Yeah, Lights Which Out. Which, honestly, looks... Yeah, Lights Out looks fine. And fucking absolutely fabulous movie. I don't think any of us have to worry about seeing that. No, I'm not going. Fuck you. Like it, no, that that's one of those. I looked on IMDb earlier. That's one of those weekends where like four things comes out. So well, like something's gonna end up getting sacrificed to that I, weekend. I, I'm not. I hated that fucking show. I I'm not that familiar. I mean, well, I I know the show, on, but like remember when it was always oh, on Comedy I, Central? Totally, but I rarely ever sat down to actually watch it. Oh, now well, the previews that, for it, it I was, totally it remember. It was that period of time where sometimes I was too high to change the channel, mm -hmm. and I sat through a couple episodes of that shit, and it's just like. But I like British humor. What the fuck is this? There was. I know they like. It was like a loose remake in the states. Uh, Sybil was Sybil Shepherd and I Christine Baranski. So I joked on Twitter and I was like, this is when I was tweeting during the trailer for that movie, which we've gotten like seven fucking times. I was like, Every movie I've been to since I've been back, we've yeah. had the absolutely fabulous trailer. I don't get it any other time except when I'm with you seeing a movie. Um, well, I think Allison and I may have gotten it once because I was like, what? I joked on Twitter, like, we're getting this absolutely fabulous movie. When am I gonna when am I gonna get Sybil the movie? <laughs> so some guy writes back and goes like, uh, I don't think it's going to happen, man. Like, from what I understand, Chris, uh, Sybil Shepard and Christine Baranski just really didn't get along on that show. And I'm like, thank you, sir. Totes being serious, bro. Yeah. <laughs> hey, fuck, man. I'm gonna bring me a movie of a show that no one gave a fuck about in the past 15 years. Like, something better. Maybe like, it'll be the Sex in the City 2 of this year. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> What's going on with the characters from Two Guys, a Girl, in a Pizza Place? Mm. One of them got buried alive in Iraq. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. When are we going to get our coupling movie? Ah, oh, fuck. And they bring back Jeff. Yeah, hell yeah. <clears throat> God damn it. Well, Jeff and Steve were both in the Libertine. <laughs> yes. It was the prequel. I just... I, I, I love how... We watched those four seasons of that show over and over and over again. Yeah. And now every time I see any of those actors in a movie, I get honestly really excited. I do too. I get so excited. I remember Richard Coyle was in, after he left Coupling, he was in this weird show called Strange, where it was like him tracking down like demons or some shit. And his name was like John Strange or something like that. <laughs> um, I remember kind of liking it because he still kind of played the part as Jeff, <laughs> only if he was hunting demons. <laughs> it was like six episodes or something like that, but I kind of remember liking it. Yeah, and he's he's in a 
There's a series of books, the Discworld books. He's in one of the movie versions mm. of one of those books where he's a con man who takes over the postal service. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> kind of fun for a weird fantasy thing. I mean, it's still a terrible translation of those books, but, you know, what can you do? I'm with you, though. Hell, like Jack Davenport popping up in, like, Kingsman, all the stuff he pops up. Oh, in. yeah. Um, I think I watched, like, the, the second two uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean movies just hoping he was to yeah. show up. Uh-huh. Like, I could give a fuck about those movies, but it's like, give me some more Jack Davenport. I remember one of the only reasons I didn't really dislike that Ninja Assassin movie, not that I remember a lot of it, but the only thing I remember about that movie was one of the main supporting characters was Patrick. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's like a V for Vendetta. Yeah. When he pops up in that, it's just mm -hmm. like, fuck yeah! Mm-hmm. Well, let's see. Tomorrow is, uh... Tomorrow, Allison and I are going to be at Secret Life of Pets, and uh, um, Brian and Sarah, I believe, are at Mike and Dave Need Wedding Dates. <clears throat> Which, good luck to you, good luck to them. <laughs> I don't think either one of them are getting that bad of reviews. The, the, um, you know what? Honestly, the uh, the one Brian and Sarah are going to doesn't look terrible. It's just that trailer's really fucking annoying. Yeah. Like, the, the, the people in that movie are solid enough that mm. it could be entertaining. Like, Zach Efron's, com you know, he's coming into his own. Mm -hmm. I'll give that dude a little bit of credit. Mm-hmm. No, I, I, given the two movies that are opening tomorrow, I imagine I'd have a bigger chance of probably liking Mike and Dave need wedding yeah. dates, dates as opposed to Secret Life of Pets, but Allison and I have ranted so hard about how sick we are of the trailer for Ugh. Secret Life of Pets, so at this point, like, I guess we gotta see it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sometimes, sometimes that's just what happens. Yeah, alright, well, see you tomorrow.